Recently for work, I've been doing one to two night trips. It's been kind of tough finding the perfect option for one bag travel. I love my Porter duffel for adventure travel, but it's just too big and it's not really suited for everyday carry. So that's where Porter Pony comes in. This is a 20 liter panel loading backpack I designed primarily for travel, but it's also become my go-to for carrying my laptop to and from the office. I wanna show you how I make the Porter Pony by following the illustrated instructions that come with the pattern. This is a long video with a lot of detail and I try to share all my tips and tricks. Use the timestamps as you progress in your own build. As I get ready for my build, now's a great time to give the video a like. We're going to give this lid volume by adding four darts, two at the top and two at the bottom. On both front and front lining, on the wrong side, we're going to mark our four darts. I first mark two notches corresponding to each dart leg, and then I mark the dart tip. If you're new to sewing darts, you might consider drawing the entire leg to help fold it. Just make sure you go down one centimeter past the mark for the dart tip. I prefer using these Clover water-soluble pencils, which you'll see me using a lot in this project. To prepare the dart, you fold in the middle between the two notches and align those together. You should have a nice even curve along this edge, and these two notches should line up together. Then you're going to sew a diagonal line from your notch straight down to one centimeter past the dart tip mark. You'll backstitch to start and then backstitch to stop down here at the bottom. If you don't want to backstitch here, which could prevent a pucker, you can leave your tails long and then tie a knot. I find with pack fabrics, you can backstitch and it works out just fine. I backstitch at the start and at the finish. When it opens up, you have a nice clean dart that creates that volume for the front panel. With your four dart sewn, you end up with these bowl shapes. Take your lining Turn it and place it wrong sides together with the shell. Make sure your darts are aligned and your notches along the top are even. To reduce the bulk as you go around this, you can turn your dart seam allowances to opposite sides. Now we're going to sew around the full perimeter with a 1 8 inch seam allowance just to hold these together. These little scraps we're going to use to make zipper tabs, and that's going to put a fabric tail on the end of the zipper while also finishing the edge. And this way, when you go ahead and assemble the bag, you won't be sewing over these teeth. You only need to sew over these teeth once. So start by lining up your zipper tab wrong sides together, even with the end, and sew across at, a, and sew across at one quarter of an inch. With it sewn at one quarter of an inch, rotate around, and fold it over. And now it should be right sides together. And so at at least a quarter inch, no more than three eighths of an inch. So just stay below one centimeter. And you just want to hide this stitch that you already made. So just go right past a quarter inch, or you can just hit it right at three eighths of an inch. So there you have a finished edge of your zipper. And this tab is what will get sewn into the project so that you don't have to sew over these teeth all the time. Be sure to add your zipper pull. When you first get your zipper pull on, though, what I like to check for is that these two edges are even. If they're off at all, then you'll get these little puckers in your zipper. And I'll put my zipper pull just right in the center, and that way this zipper kind of stays together for future steps. We'll do the exact same thing again. So wrong sides together, sew it, flip it around, and then sew it again. And just like that, you've got your zipper prepared for inserting into this pocket. So now what you want to do is you cut pocket along the cut line to make alignment a little easier. It might be a good idea to mark the center of your zipper because it's easier to, to align these panels 
at the center points rather than at the ends, mainly because of these curves. So you just fold the zipper in half and mark it. And we can use that center mark to align your panels. Okay, another thing to think about is which direction you like your zipper to close. I prefer mine to close left to right. So here, when I pull to the left, it's open. As I close to the right, that's when the zipper will be closed. So in this orientation, with the zipper closed to the right, I'm gonna put this panel, this top panel, along the edge. And that'll make sure that when I fold it open like this, the zipper will be in the correct orientation. So now we'll sew this top edge right sides together and center aligned about this middle notch. And then we're gonna sew this directly in the middle of the fabric zipper tape between the teeth, between these teeth and the edge, joining these two together. So again, between your teeth edge and the fabric edge, we're gonna sew right in the middle of that. Zipper sewn to the top portion of pocket. You can fold the top out of the way and we'll place the bottom half right sides together and sew it to the other side of the zipper. Make sure to center align again so that the edges of the pocket line up correctly. So right in the middle between the fabric edge of the zipper tape and the teeth. That bottom edge sewn, you can open it up and finger press these seams flat. And then with a either color matching or contrasting thread, we can top stitch this. And you'll top stitch right along this edge on top as well as right along the edge on the bottom and that'll hold these flat. I found a thread that matched the fabric almost perfectly, which is always cool. And then on the other side, you've got finished edges to your zippers and we can just trim this to match the curve here. Sew so two darts into pocket back just like you did on the lid. And this is going to seem a little weird, but you're going to place the right side of pocket front to the wrong side of pocket back along this bottom edge. Now that's, that might seem a little weird, but the whole point is that later, the right side of the pocket back will be visible on the inside of the pocket. Is we're just gonna sew along this bottom edge. Don't sew the perimeter. And it might be easiest if you start at the center and sew to one side and then come back, start at the center and sew to the other side. You just wanna sew again to the bottom edge. <laughs> Now that this is sewn along just the bottom edge, so this is this weird shape now, we actually wanna finish this edge so they're not raw on the inside of the pocket. You can use this double fold bias tape or grow grain ribbon or just cheap ribbon you can buy at the craft store. The length of grow grain, what I like to do is I fold it in half and crease it and you can run it right along the sharp edge of your table. And that'll force a crease into it. And it makes clipping it on and sewing it by hand a lot easier. With that bottom edge finished with grow grain, now what you wanna do is flip the whole thing, turn it to where the right side of the back is against the wrong side of the front. Effectively, the darts, the, right, the good side will be inside the bag. Now this is, two panels are gonna make a 3D shape. So all I do is I line up the top edges. I check my notches in the center, make sure those are aligned. I follow the curve around. And then I dress the binding down at the bottom, right down here at the bottom so it lays flat. This front part with the zipper actually rolls under and creates the bottom of this 3D pocket. The back with the dart should be wrong sides out. And then I'm just gonna sew from one edge around to the other edge. We're just gonna baste it together with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. This pocket's going to lay inside your lid. To attach these, we're gonna sew on top of this basting stitch around on those three sides, holding it in place. With pocket inserted in the lid, you can actually slide your hand underneath this. There's really no reason you, you would, but that just shows that this pocket is not connected in the middle. Otherwise, you'd see a stitch line across the front, which you don't want. So it's basted around those three sides, and we can set this aside. With top panel, we're gonna be adding a handle. You're looking at the wrong side of top. I've drawn my cut line on here to show that it's the wrong side. 
and I mark the locations where my box stitches are going to go. I cut some small scraps of the same fabric, and I'm just going to place them over the location that the box stitch is going to go through, and that reinforces this panel. These won't be seen later because this whole thing is going to be lined, uh, but this extra layer of fabric is just a reinforcement for if you've got some weight in the bag and you pick it up with the handle. So I just make sure it's in the right place, and then what I find the easiest thing to do is just use a little painter's tape. You can use um, double-sided tape or whatever, right? You just need something to hold this in place and uh, keep the tape away from where your stitches are gonna be. Like that. Now that's gonna be directly underneath the locations. We're also through the webbing at the box stitches to create a handle right here. I'm using one inch webbing and I'm gonna cut 14 inches. And we're going to place that along this, this panel. Now what you want, you want a little bit of give in this handle. So what I do is I kind of line it up on one side. So you see here it's lined up over here on this edge. This will actually curve down a little bit. And I'll hold it in one spot. I'll do the other side. And I make sure that that's just got enough, a little bit of room here. Like, so you can easily get a finger underneath it. And that way you can grab the handle easy later. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew my box stitch at these locations. Again, just making sure you got a little slack here, but you don't want it so much slack that the edges pull in from the sides. So here's the top handle on the prototype. The box stitches will go right here, and then you've got these two loops here that uh, you can clip things to. You can see that this panel actually curves. So when you sew this bit on, down here on the side, it's gonna have a little pucker in it almost uh, when it's laying flat, but when it curves, it kind of goes away. There's the box stitch on the front. When you look from the back, there's two marks right here, and that's for you to kind of position your webbing between those two spots. And you'll see it kind of gives it a, a little pucker here almost, but that's okay. Once it curves, it kind of goes away. Okay, so I'm gonna base stitch this webbing to the to the top here at just one eighth of an inch. But you see this pucker I was talking about. And uh, mine's a little exaggerated, so I'll take some of that out a little bit just by extending this down. And that's good. So then we'll just sew this at one eighth of an inch to hold it in place. With the handle on the top, now what we're gonna do is prepare a zipper to insert into the top. And that's gonna be this zipper right here along the top panel, and that gets you access to the uh, laptop, basically. Let me show you the difference between a regular coil zipper and a reverse coil, because mine's gonna be a reverse coil. Okay, so on this one here, you see the teeth are on the good side of the fabric. That's a regular zipper pull. On this zipper, you see the teeth are hidden, and they're actually on the inside. And it's the exact same zipper tape, but you use a different pull. So the zipper pull, the short tab, is a reverse coil. Because I'm using a reverse coil, my wrong side is with the teeth down. With your zipper length, go ahead and put your two ends, the two zipper tabs on, and don't forget your zipper pull in the middle. Okay, with your zipper tabs on the top zipper, we're now gonna cut along the cut line so we can insert the zipper between the shell and the lining. So to place this zipper, you want it right sides up in the zipper closing in the orientation you want. I found the center point of this zipper. I'm gonna take my shell and along the center point of the shell, I'm gonna place that right sides together with the zipper. And I'll go ahead and clip it. And then with my lining piece from the top, I'm gonna place it right sides together with the shell. So it would actually be touching the wrong side of the zipper. You have your shell right sides together with the zipper. Underneath the zipper, but right side facing, is your lining piece. And all three are aligned about the center mark. The edge of the top and the edge of the lining should, should be even. We're gonna sew this to the zipper right between where the teeth are and this edge. So it's a good thing now to just go ahead and finger press all this flat. If your thread's already 
if your thread in the machine it already matches what you're gonna top stitch with, you can top stitch it now. In the instructions, I wait to top stitch it just because I don't wanna put my color matching thread on yet. Okay, so for the next side, you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna line the bottom half of the top right side together with the zipper, and then the right side of the lining goes against the bottom of the zipper. So it's just important to remember that the right side of the shell and the right side of the lining are together. The zipper is between the two, and it should be right side touching with the shell. Okay, so when that's opened up, you now have the right side of the, of the shell with a zipper inserted. It's fully lined on the back side. What you can do next is go ahead and top stitch along the zipper, right along this edge, and you'll top stitch through all the layers. Okay, when top stitching this, what I like to do is I make sure that the lining is pulled away, you know, away from the zipper, so it's taut on the bottom. And then I do the same thing with the shell. And I finger press this shell along the zipper the whole time I'm sewing it. So I'll sew a couple inches, I'll check my lining is taut, I finger press where I'm going to sew, and then I just pay very close attention to keep an even spacing along this edge that I'm sewing. And one other comment that's optional is that once this is top stitched and all this is nice and flat, these edges to hold everything together, you can base stitch around the whole perimeter. And that'll make this all one cohesive piece. All right, so there we go. So the top is now ready. The zipper's inserted, it's top stitched. Everything's nice and flat and held together. You can see I based it around the outside edge to hold all the lining and the shell together. The last thing you want to do is just clean up all these, any excess that you have. Just clean that up with some scissors. Okay, for your foam on the bottom panel, I'm using the foam that I got out of a package and this foam came in it. Um, this is actually polyethylene foam. Um, it works really well in packs. Um, EVA foam works great. Crosslink polyethylene foam works great. Uh, I try to use this stuff because you know, it's free to me and uh, it holds up really well. Okay, so with your bottom panels, we're actually gonna be sewing them wrong sides together and we're gonna make a taco or a hot pocket, whatever you want, however you wanna think about it. You're gonna sew three of the sides. I pick the short sides and then I take my foam, I slide it between the layers and then I'll close in the last edge. And that way you have this sandwich of shell, foam, and then lining. Okay, so those are basted together, and again, the wrong sides are touching. So right side, right side, and then take my foam, insert it in. And because this was only basted at one eighth of an inch, the foam will feel pretty loose. I push the foam all the way down. I align my center notches on the bottom panel, clip it, and then I close that in again with an eighth inch seam allowance. When you end up using your full seam allowance, it'll tighten all this up. So on my prototype bag, I didn't have any external pockets. A lot of people ask for kind of a water bottle pocket, so, so I'll show you how to make it, but I'm probably not gonna sew it into my bag. Uh, the main thing to really think about is the direction of stretch for the fabric you're gonna use. So when you have your fabric, you know, check to see which direction has more stretch. Once you have your pocket cut out, you need to determine which side you're gonna put the pocket on. If you're doing both, then you're just gonna do this twice and uh, it'll be a mirrored copy. So when you're looking at your side panel, the double notches denote the, the side that mounts to the back, right? So this double notch would be in this seam between the side panel and your back panel. So that'll help you determine, is this the left or the right side? So this one is actually, would be on the wearer's right, right side. So if the pocket was gonna be on that side, then you lay the pocket on there. So I'm gonna roll it to the, to the wrong side and then I'll clip it just so it's held in place. So now I know that that hem is in the right orientation where it's gonna to roll to the wrong side of the fabric. What you need to do is you have to hem this with enough room for the, for the elastic to feed through that channel. I've got it set on the zigzag stitch. I'm at a about two and a half stitch length and a width of just under two. I don't know if that means anything to you on your machine, but that's what I'm doing. I've also increased foot pressure. 
and the tension I'm gonna leave kind of normal. Something I find is useful is the, the sample piece that I, you know, that I use for getting my settings, I actually left attached to the thread, so I didn't cut it. And I'm gonna put a little bit of tension on that to help feed it at the start. And I'm also gonna keep just a tiny bit of tension on the stretch material. I'm not pre-stretching it, I'm just keeping a little tension on it. And I'm just gonna do a zigzag stitch right along the bottom of the hemline here, leaving myself more than enough room to feed my elastic into a channel. And I'm gonna cut my tails really long. I didn't back stitch. I leave the tails long so that they don't unravel. You can see the thread, the red stitching there. It's a long, long zigzag, has stretch still in it, and the front looks nice and clean. So we're gonna overlay our pocket onto the pattern, and you're gonna notice that there's a pleat called out here. And all that means is that you fold one side to the other. It's not a dart, you're just gonna fold it over at the seam line effectively. When you have it on your panel, the easy way to check yourself is if you're folding it enough is that once the pleat is there, it'll be the same width as the bottom of the side panel. You just move one notch to the other. It's a very small pleat. It's only about a quarter inch pleat. And I'll just clip that all together. What that pleat does is that gives a little bit of volume when you have a bottle in here. It just adds a little volume at the bottom so that this bottom edge isn't super tight. So this is three quarter inch non-roll elastic. It's just flat elastic. This will just go into that channel. When you sew this to the sides, you just want this elastic to, you don't want to stretch it at all because you, you don't want to deform this side panel. You just want it to be flat. So what I would do is I would just have it clipped just like this. And I'm gonna sew, I would sew around the perimeter, but this elastic obviously would be inside the channel. And then the pleat is down here at the bottom. You just sew straight over that pleat. The pocket ends up being the exact same size as the side panel that you're sewing it to. When you're ready to put the sides to the bottom, I find it's really helpful to make sure that you transfer your notch locations onto the right side of bottom. To find those notches, I just kind of spread the seam open that's basted, and then I transfer them, uh, especially the double notches, as well as these on the side of bottom. The orientation is extremely important. When you're right side together, you can see that these notches don't align that way, which means that you need to turn it to the other side and use that notch that's not directly in the center to get the correct orientation. And you should have this kind of V-shape. I'll clip it right there at that notch just for now. And I'm gonna do the same thing to find the right lining side. So I'll flip this over and again, right, you'll want it right side together, the lining materials, which also means these two, the shell and the lining, are right side together. And I'm gonna line these up along that side edge, looking for that notch in the correct, correct orientation. So now the lining, the bottom, and, this, and the shell all line up at this notch along this edge, forming this A or V shape. Once you have this shape, we're gonna sew right along that side with a full 3 8 inch seam allowance, or one centimeter seam allowance. So with that edge stitched at the full 3 8 or one centimeter seam allowance, you're gonna open all these up. So now you have the side and the bottom are right sides out, and the linings are right sides. The other important thing to pay attention to, to ensure you have the right orientation, is that the double notches here, when you come down over to side and to the, and to the shell, your double notches are on this same long edge. With all this pressed nice and flat, double checking your notches all kind of aligned between the shell and the lining, etc., you can top stitch this to hold it flat right along this seam. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So I find it's good to push the foam that's floating inside the bottom panel, just move it out of your way, and you have more than enough room up here to get a full 3 8 inch seam allowance. And same thing, make sure you get your panel to line with that, those notches and they should be right sides together. Notch to notch, right sides together, like that. We'll run same stitch, 3 eighths of an inch right across that edge. 
So pretty much any time I'm gonna use a full seam allowance, I have a seam guide set up. So as much precision I can add in every one of these stitches is important because they all stack up and end up contributing to an overall quality bag. So now we have this panel where you've got side, bottom, side. Now we need to turn it into a loop by adding the top panel. It's effectively done the exact same way. Same thing, you need to make sure that you align those notches so you have your panels in the right orientation. So just do one panel at a time and it'll end up getting there. What I need is that this lining is right sides together with this lining. So you just take this, you rotate it around to where they're right sides together. And if you're unsure about whether or not the orientation's correct, you can very gently turn it like you'd sewn it. And you'll see that it's now right side to right side, right side and right side. And you can check your double notches are all in the correct orientation. So double notch down here, and my double notch is right here along that same edge. You can go and sew 3 8 inch seam allowance right across there again. That's now sewn, so we can turn it out to the right side. And then we have the top joined with side and goes to bottom. And then at the other side, we need to join with top. You flip it on itself to where side is right side together with top and the notch aligns. And then you want to rotate this so that the lining is right side together with the other lining. If you again, if you want to make sure that you have all this to where there's no twist in it, with it clipped, you can gently open it up and make sure that you have one continuous loop with no twist in any panels. Then you'll do that 3 8 inch seam allowance again for the fourth time. That fourth seam is sewn, so I'll turn it right sides out. If you haven't top stitched but you still want to, you can do all four at this point. And if you want to, to make assembly a little easier later, you can do some base stitching to join panels together if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the back panel. Okay, so let me show you the back panel. This is a 3D back panel, and it's made from multiple parts where there's A and B, three instances of C, and then two instances of D, and there's also foam. But what this does is it creates this breathable channel that's offset from the back panel. So what you're gonna see me use is red fabric for panel A, black for B, red for C and red for D, and then I've got black polyethylene foam for the inserts. I'm using black on this back piece mainly so you can see the kind of the hot pocket shape that's gonna be created to we're gonna insert the foam into, but you don't need to do a contrasting color. Also to note is that this whole pattern is set up specifically for quarter inch foam. If you change your thickness of foam, you are going to have to adjust these pieces. So the easiest thing to do is just stick to the material list and use the quarter inch uh, or thinner foam. If it's thinner, it may just float around inside the panel a little bit more. But definitely don't go thicker than quarter inch or six millimeters. Otherwise, this may not work out so well for you. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna have A side, right side down, take B, place it right side down on top of A. A is bigger than B, so center align them, and we're gonna sew along one edge at one eighth of an inch or three mil. One side is now sewn together with an eighth inch. Now what you wanna do is you want to lift A, create a pocket, and line up with the other side of B. Center align it, I'll clip it, so you're basically just sewing side to side, but A is bigger, so it's gonna have an arc to it. And do the same thing, eighth inch. Okay, so I have two copies of this tube between A and panel A and B. So here you're gonna sew C right sides together with A and sew it with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so I have BP1 and BP2 both have a panel C attached to it. It doesn't really matter which side it is because these panels are exactly the same at this point. So on BP1, my third instance of C, I'm going to attach to the other side opposite this C panel. Right sides together, center align it, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. OK, 
Okay, so now BP1 has panel C on both sides and then place BP2 right sides together and sew it only to C. And we'll do a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And you can check yourself because what you'll have is C, BP1, C, BP2, and C. So there's the start of your back panel. And we want to top stitch now to have all this just to help it lay flat. So when you top stitch it, you're gonna be sewing on only the C panels. And you wanna sew through C and the seam allowance of A and B. And then in the middle, you'll be sewing on C panel twice. Okay, so that's now all been top stitched and it looks really nice. So now what you wanna do is you wanna insert your foam into this pocket. You can kinda of bend the foam around if you need to to get it into that sleeve. And it should be nice and taut. Now the way that this is patterned is that, that the whole back panel, C and B, will lay flat, and A wraps around the foam and sticks out from a flat back panel. If you find your seam allowances aren't, just aren't that precise, and the foam isn't fitting very well, you can trim a little bit off the foam, but you want it to be nice and tight inside this panel. So what you wanna do is kinda of like wrapping a present. You're gonna push A down to B to where it aligns up in this top edge, and you can kind of fold little corners or pleats at the, at the edges here, just so you get a really nice finished edge along uh, the top of the foam. And just do 1 8 inch seam allowance so that you can close in the other side by floating this foam out of the way. So you can see those corners are dressed. So we just need to do the exact same thing on the other side. And to help yourself, just push the foam down towards the edges that you just closed in. All right, so both sides of the foam are now closed in. And we'll treat the, the side that uh, we just closed in, that the foam's still out of the way of, as the bottom. And you wanna take panel D, line it up along the bottom edge, right sides together, and we're gonna sew it with 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you find that your foot in the, is hitting the foam, put on a zipper foot, and that'll give you a lot more clearance. The first curved panel that makes up the bottom is attached and I went ahead and top stitched it. With your two four inches pieces of webbing on the right side of the back panel, the spacing isn't super critical nor is this angle, but you want at least three and a half inches and I measure from the center to center at three and a half inches. And then at my angle, this is about five inches down at the bottom, center to center. And again, the angle isn't super critical, it's really just for comfort around your neck. Then you're gonna take back panel D, place it right sides together on top of the webbing. And we're gonna sew this with three eight inch seam allowance and it needs to be precise. So if you have to use a zipper foot because you're gonna be competing with foam here. When you go over the webbing, you can either reinforce it or come back and bar tack that webbing to secure it. I went ahead and just basted my webbing on uh, real quick. And now I have a zipper foot on. It's almost guaranteed that you're gonna to wanna to use a zipper foot here because the foam doesn't have enough room to ride inside the channel. So you're gonna be sewing at an exactly a three inch seam allowance and that will be pretty close to the foam. So D is now connected and I went ahead and reinforced and tacked my webbing in that seam allowance. The webbing pieces, we're gonna to want to lift those up and you're gonna to wanna to put a a tacking stitch, a bar tack, right up in here in the middle. And what this does is it gives you two places to attach your shoulder straps. You can either go on the low side or the high side. And if you want to reinforce this fabric underneath, you can use just small patches underneath where you're gonna put your bar tack on the wrong side of D, just to give it a little bit more pullout strength. The webbing's now bar tacked in these two locations and they're reinforced underneath. I also top stitched D panel down to the seam allowance underneath. Down on the bottom for the lower shoulder strap attachments, the vertical position on here isn't super critical. If you're taller, you may wanna have them a little lower. If you're shorter, have them a little higher. And then the angle of which they're pointing is really just for comfort when you're wearing the straps. Again, you can, you can experiment with that, but it's, it's not super critical. I just have them upward tilted a little bit. You can see how much they're. At this point, it's a good idea to check your back lining and your back panel are the same size. 
If you nailed all your seam allowances when you created this back panel, these two pieces will be the exact same size. And that's because the inside of this is pretty ugly. You don't wanna see that on the inside of your bag. This back lining will cover all of that inside the bag. Working on the laptop sleeve, first thing we're gonna be doing is hemming the top edge towards the wrong side of the fabric. This hem is sized for whatever elastic you're gonna slide into it. I'm using three quarter inch elastic, so this hem needs to be large enough to slide this into as a channel. There's a half inch fold down first, and then you'll fold the whole thing down again by an inch. Then we'll sew this hem along this edge with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So I've got that hem sewn. And we'll feed the elastic through. At this point, don't tack to the elastic because you're gonna be gathering this channel a little bit when you fit it to the back panel. The way I do this laptop sleeve is I align at the center point at the bottom. There's two notches. You got double notches down here at the bottom, so line those up. These pleats just allow you to pull the sides in evenly down here at the bottom, and it creates this volume here. So they're really small pleats. It really doesn't take very much fold over, and you can just crease it vertically. And we're just gonna sew from one side around the bottom to the other side. Don't worry about going all the way to the top yet. And I sewed down around this bottom curve, catching the pleats to give it that little volume. Now what you wanna do is you want to position one side of the at the top. And you pin this down even at the sides. And then you gather your laptop sleeve on the, wet, on the elastic just slide it on the elastic to, so that the other side aligns. And then pull your elastic a little bit here. You're not necessarily tensioning it, you're just getting the excess out so that this lays flat. So that's, so the channel's now gathered on the elastic. One thing you wanna be very careful of is that you don't have any tension on the elastic because you don't wanna warp this back panel. To size how big you want your laptop sleeve to be, just go ahead and grab your laptop. This is my work laptop, it's a little one. It's usually what I carry when I travel. And you don't want it to sink all the way down. You also, because you want there to be room at the bottom here that's going to suspend this laptop to where when you set the bag down, it doesn't hit the ground. Two and a half inches will be fine for me. So I went ahead and marked mine at the two and a half inch mark. And when you sew across this, it's gonna seem weird that you're gonna sew across your pleat volume. You just wanna make sure you carry that volume up. So you'll do the same thing, you'll pleat it when you sew across it. If easier, you can start in the center and go out, start in the center and go out. Uh, and that way these pleats fold down nicely. You just wanna make sure you keep the volume up here. If you're gonna do the diagonal, just start a little higher, come down, and you just, at the where it's horizontal, that needs to be the width of your laptop. I'm just gonna do a straight line. So here you can see I went ahead and sewed across that, and again, it's that red, red stitch line, so it's kind of hard to see it. And where I pleated it, it carries that volume above that stitch line. So again, it's just a very small little fold, folded pleat. So now what you wanna do is you wanna lay this on top of your back panel, and then align at your double notches on top and bottom, and your notches on the side. And this panel, your laptop sleeve, should cover your entire back panel so I went ahead and I pinned my lining and the laptop sleeve to the back panel itself. Here's the foam. It's aligned at the top and bottom at your notches and as well as on the sides. Make sure this isn't cockeyed. And I went ahead and marked an opening. This opening is very important because you're gonna put foam in here at a future step. So I'm gonna sew from one mark all the way around and stop at the other mark. I'm gonna back stitch at start and end to lock that stitch in place. So there's my opening, and I've sewn all the way around the perimeter. Then you can go ahead and trim up most of your, any excess webbing or elastic. And if you want, you can chest with your laptop, make sure it still slides in okay, and that's pretty good. I've given you this paper guide so you know how long to cut your main zipper. I lay my zipper flat, and I use this template to mark my zipper tape in the midpoint. And then I move the midpoint 
to find the total length. I don't try to bend the zipper in half. It's important to get this accurate, otherwise you're likely to get rippling in the zipper installation later. This paper template is half the length of the zipper, remember that, so you gotta double it. Your total zipper should be around 43 inches, but use the paper guide, because the precision's important. If you're wondering when you see me cut through these zippers, uh, this is a pair of utility scissors, this is not fabric shears. With your zipper cut, you need to put dual sliders on. These are head to head. So one goes from one side, and then you'll install the other zipper on the other side. So just like this, you can open the bag from any location. Okay, so instead of doing zipper tabs, we're actually gonna use these fabric pieces, these fillers, to create a continuous loop of zipper. Again, it's a reverse coil zipper slider I'm using. Uh, your teeth may be on the right side, so just pay attention to the zipper slider you're using. But So the shell is right sides together with the right side of your zipper, and the lining should be right sides together with the shell. And we're gonna sew across this with a 3 8 or one centimeter seam allowance. So one end is sewn at the 3 8 of an inch. You're gonna open this up and that finishes both sides of that zipper, just like a zipper tab would. Make sure there's no twist in your zipper tape. Then you want your shell to be right side together with the zipper again, and your lining right side together with shell. So what you can do is you can, once you clip it, unroll it to where everything's right sides out. Make sure there's no twist in either your zipper or your fabric pieces. Then you can flip it back on itself and we'll sew this again, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. With both sides sewn, you now see I have a continuous loop of zipper and there's no twist in it. And I have my two zipper sliders installed head to head. Okay, so now I've got my front again. And this up here is the top where I have the zipper pocket on the inside of front or the lid. That's gonna be the midpoint of the zipper. Down here at the bottom, I want the shell to be right side together and align my notches, then the lining I'll just place on top of the notch. Then you can work your zipper around. Over here on the side where the fabric is, meets the zipper, that should align up with your darts on both sides. The midpoint of the zipper will be up at the top notch. You wanna make sure that this all aligns well because any inaccuracy here, and you're going to get puckers in the lid, which you don't want, obviously. Another little tip here that might make, make aligning this easier is as you come around these turns, you can make very small relief cuts in the zipper tape to have it bend around the turn itself. But don't make these relief cuts more than about an eighth of an inch deep. You definitely wanna make sure that they're shallow eighth of an inch relief cuts so that they don't get into your seam line. I don't try to pin all this in a bunch of places. You can if you want to, if that's how you do it, but. I make sure that the darts at the bottom and the center notch align, and then I will make sure this top notch aligns. But I'll start here at the bottom and sew around, because if I get this correct, then I'm very likely to get the top portion correct. Okay, so you can see I got my zipper sewn on and I used the 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. Down here at the bottom, when I unroll this, you can see that the, you can see where this zipper filler fabric aligns with my darts. There's one, two. Binding this now is probably a good idea. It is a little easier to access. If you have to switch your machine over to an attachment and all that kind of stuff, you can do it later. But if you're doing it by hand, it definitely makes sense to do it now. So again, use grow grain binding and you're gonna cover this raw edge all the way around. While I'm using a dedicated binding setup, you really don't have to. Several of my pattern testers bound this by hand. You saw I did some binding by hand earlier. For me, it's just so much faster. The result is cleaner and, and more professional looking. Um, so you don't need to use this, but I, I would still highly recommend that you bind these seams because it will come out with a better result. All right, so now what I have is I have the gusset loop that's sitting with right sides up. So here at the bottom is the right side of the shell of the gusset loop. I'm turning the zipper I just sewed 
to be right sides together with that. And I'm aligning my, my single notches. And then up here at the top, you can actually move the lid out of the way. You just need the zipper. You want the zipper to be right sides together with the top. Make sure you have no twist in it. And again, right sides together with the, set, the single notch at the top, not the double notches. This is really important to get the orientation correct. It should be single notch to single notch. To make sure you've got your orientation correctly where the zipper's on the correct edge of gusset, you should have zipper, webbing, zipper. Kind of like before, down here where your zipper filler meets the zipper, that should line up with this seam between the side and the bottom. Might be a little difficult to see what's going on here, but the main zipper is right sides together with the shell of gusset. It's clipped at the top and at the bottom in the center. And my seams between the zipper filler and the zipper line up with the seam between the bottom panel and the sides. I'm gonna be starting in the bottom and sewing around the perimeter. Push the foam out of the way so you get a full 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around this perimeter. For precision, I'm using a seam guide so that I get my full 3 8 inch seam allowance. And as I sew, I'm gonna make sure that I just keep the lining and the shell and the zipper all lined up together. I have my gusset down so that I'm actually curving all of this to the gusset. And that helps me kind of negotiate these turns. With the zipper open, it's a lot easier to kind of manipulate these things. So I'm noticing that I'm getting a lot of rippling here. And what's going on is that I miss my seam allowance. So rather than trying to, tuck, to have a tuck down at the bottom here, I'm actually gonna pop some of these stitches out and redo this curve. So I pulled those stitches out. I'm gonna restart my stitch line and I cut some relief cuts because I'm having to bend this to fit this curve here. All right, so there may be a little bit of puckering in the lining. We'll see what the outside looks like. Okay, so I've got the main zipper now sewn onto the gusset. When I look at the right side, there's almost there, it's very clean. There's no puckers here and looks really good. And my alignment between the dart on the front panel, the bottom seam, and that filler line up on both sides. Once you're happy with that seam and everything looks good, no puckering, you can go ahead and trim your tails and then seam bind this edge. So here's one that you've seen with the grow grains binded on. You do the exact same thing on this edge of the zipper to finish that edge. All right, for the pack assembly, you want your gusset and, and lid uh, lining side out, and you're gonna have your back panel with the foam up. So this is right side, and then the shell is the right side. You're gonna place those together. And what you wanna be doing is aligning at your, at your double notches, top and bottom, at the center of top and bottom, you look for those double notches, and then your notches on the sides should line up with the side notches on here. And that way, nothing gets kind of cattywonkus. Remember, over here on the back panel, we left a gap, and that's where we're gonna insert foam later. You wanna make sure you leave that gap open. We're gonna start on one side, go all the way around the perimeter, and leave that gap there. And that'll join the two bags together and allow us to put the foam in. Here I've got back panel pinned to the side and the gusset. I wanna mark where I don't wanna close that gap, just to reinforce and remind myself so I won't sew between those two points. And a couple other landmarks that you can pay attention to. This diagonal seam at the top, that lands at the seam with the back panel at D. This panel here, this seam here between bottom and side will align with the seam at back panel D.
check it out. Got the back panel attached to the sides, top and bottom. And as you saw, I was using a lot of relief cuts to get this seam allowance squared away. I left myself this gap so that now we can insert our foam. You can inspect to make sure that you like the quality of your seams as you go around these turns and that you have alignment. So I haven't looked at it yet, so we'll be surprised together. Here's the seam between top and side, and it aligns with, with back panel D. And then on this side, same thing. There you go, so that looks good. And then down at the bottom, see how that looks. So here's bottom panel D coming around on the back panel, and then it meets with that seam. That looks really good. And then over here, it looks really good. I don't really have any puckers, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and stuff it with the foam. Uh, if you're wondering how I cut this foam, I actually just use an X-Acto knife. Uh, I find it works the easiest, and I put my paper pattern directly on it. Uh, this gives me the most precision. Uh, what I see some people do and they have, end up having problems with is that they, they trace this, and then they, then they cut outside the tracing. So you're effectively adding quite a bit on both sides. It makes this panel too big. So use your paper patterns, and uh, you can always reprint them if you need to, and it'll make your life a lot easier in the long run. What you're gonna do is just roll this and insert it into the back panel between your laptop sleeve and the back panel. I'm closing in this gap. If you need to, uh, switch to a zipper foot to give yourself a little more room with the foam. Again, my foot's narrow enough that I don't need to. Porter Duffel share the same shoulder straps. As they're removable, one set of straps can fit across three different size bags. The front of the straps are made with three shell elements labeled A, B, and C. The back of the straps are made with lining fabric, but 3D spacer mesh is a great option. Quarter inch foam will be inserted and small lengths of webbing are used for the hardware. Here's a few options for the hardware. I'll be using slick clips for connecting the shoulder strap to the main bag. Double gatekeepers come in both plastic and aluminum, and I really like these, but they're getting hard to find. I'll be using the plastic double gatekeeper for the lower webbing strap. And last, I'll be using these ladder locks on the shoulder strap for tensioning the webbing. The bottom of part A is marked with a double notch. Thread a short length of webbing to a slit clip and tuck the webbing under itself. You want about a half inch of part A showing above the hardware. On the right side, center align the length of webbing left and right. We'll bar tack the webbing to part A in two locations. A box stitch works fine as well. The webbing should overhang the bottom of part A. With two mirrored copies of part A, part C is made very similar. Thread the long webbing through the ladder lock. On the right side of fabric, center align the webbing. Tuck the webbing under itself. About half an inch of part C should be seen under the ladder lock. We'll bar tack the webbing in two locations, sewing to part C. If you want to secure the free end of the webbing on both part A and C, you can base stitch with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Part B will be sewn in between A and C. The mirror geometry is important, so be sure your notches are marked. Right sides together, find part B, which matches the double notch of part A. These will be sewn with a quarter inch or six millimeter seam allowance. As you sew across it, reinforce the webbing or come back and bar tack after. With mirrored copies of A and B, double notches aligned, we'll now join part C. Right sides together, find part C which matches the single notch of part B. Again, sew with a quarter inch or six millimeter seam allowance and reinforce the webbing. If you want to, now's the perfect time to top stitch right along these seams between A and B and B and C. Position the strap lining right sides together with the shell. These two should be the same size. Leaving the top edge open, we'll sew around the strap with a precise quarter inch seam allowance. 
As you near the lower curve, flip the ladder lock out of the way. It's good to have this hardware upside down anyways, as it'll help flip the strap later. We'll turn the strap while simultaneously stuffing the foam. I use this PVC pipe as a push pull. To start the turn, press a small cup into the curved bottom. Once I have a small cup, I'll align the foam along the strap to make sure I have the orientation correct, and I'll flip it up so it's poking into the small cup. Set the push pull into the cup with the foam touching the shell side of the strap against the hardware. Then begin to turn the strap over both the foam and the pole. My pole's touching the floor so I can pull down against it. Be careful not to pull the foam as it's pretty easy to tear. As you reach the slick clip at the top, be extra careful. The foam should reach all the way to the curved end of the strap and inset from the top opening by about half an inch or 13 millimeters. Once I have the strap set almost all the way to the end, here's a tip. I tend to grab the top two layers of the fabric without touching the foam and flick the entire strap. That helps the foam drive all the way down into the curved end. To clean finish the top opening, I recommend folding all the seams inward, sort of like wrapping a present. I first fold the corners in, then the shell and the lining. Shoot for symmetry and sew straight across the top. To prevent the strap from rolling on the foam, you can tack through the strap if your machine has the foot clearance. Okay, so the straps are pretty much done. I stitched in a ditch right up here and down here to keep the strap from rolling. And you can see it sews through the foam. And then the top is nice and closed in. The last thing that you would do is using another piece of hardware is you'd make the opposite end of the strap. One end would be free and it would go through this ladder lock for tension. The other end would go to your, your captive hardware. So here's what your strap will end up looking like. You'll have your hardware attached to one side. The other side, I just put a little fold over and stitch it down and that helps keep this from sliding inadvertently through your hardware. On your bag, your straps will be kind of attached like this where this curve goes towards the outside of the bag. Use your hardware to attach either upper or lower loop. And then this, this other hardware goes through the bottom loop. Go ahead and feed us through the ladder lock. And there we go. And your shoulder straps are done.